Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a double featurette on a vehicle that just hates everyone. This is the Tier 10 of British Tank Destroyer, the FV4005 Stage 2. And you might have seen these in the matchmaker a little bit recently, and that is because currently the vehicle is top of the tree. And players like Fafa is Beast of the West, who we've got the pleasure of checking out from the European server at the start of today is going to show you exactly why this vehicle is an absolute monster. This tank has two kinds of effective ammunition. It has its armor-piercing rounds that have over 300 penetration. If we're being pedantic, 310 to be exact, and they deal 1,150 damage per shot. What's impressive about these armor-piercing rounds as well is the Obviously, Fafa decides that they're the inferior shell on the tank because they decide to take 15 premium rounds, which are high explosive squashed head. And who needs 1,150 alpha damage when you can get 1,750? The shells do cost 8,000 a pop, and so I can only imagine how good Fafa must have felt there when not only did they risk the 8,000 credits blind, they killed possibly the best scouting tier 10 light tank on the enemy team who was in a bush that would have been able to basically prevent Fafa's team from advancing in. The Manticore got one shot. And let's also take into account that the damage total that Fafa is already up to at 1,492 might be an extra 1,400 on top of that if the Manticore was at full health and depending on whether they had field mods or whether they also had a durability device. To say this thing ruins people's dreams is an understatement. When you get hit by the FV4005, it just hits different. And it's absolutely game-changing implications, not, not just for the player, but also sometimes for the way that the game is going to pan out. Taking 1,750 average damage is enough to obliterate most tier 10 vehicles. And we can see that Fafa there clearly doesn't want to waste the 8,000 credits on doing a paltry amount of damage, 148 to the Griller. No, Fafa only wants the big boy hit points, trying to find a shell on the M60 instead. I guess when you're trying to go for damage, and even if you want to try and break even with spending 8,000 credits a, a shot, you're really not going to achieve that by doing 180 damage to finish off a Griller. But you are if you manage to hit the FV4-430U. So, did I call it the FV430U? Goodness gracious, I've almost got a little bit too much British tank destroyer on my brain. Maybe I'm getting uh, brain damage from how hard these hits are. Maybe it's uh, sympathy pains for the enemy team right now as Fafa manages to hit four shells in a row, each penetrating and each rolling for a decent amount. Fafa waits there, it looks like, for the leopard, but oh my word, a little bit of a flinch there. I guess the greed is real with that shot. Trying to maybe shoot in between the M60 and the Leopard, actually. Maybe trying to double down that at least one of them's going to take the hit. But for the first time in the game, Fafa actually doesn't manage to damage anything. Unless, of course, there's some kind of blind STRV 103B there. This vehicle is capable of just outrageous things. And Fafa looks like his, he's just letting his minions finish off the kills, instead trying to turn attention to those big old juicy one-shots. These kind of shells... They look great for YouTube, right? This is one of those kind of games where Fafa, like, mate, you could have bought a lottery ticket. You could have bought a lottery ticket and you'd probably be, uh, you'd be a millionaire now. Instead, you're just gonna get a ridiculously huge damage game in a very short period of time in World of Tanks. Spoilers. Well, I mean, already Fafa's up to 6,700 damage that we've seen. And remember the blind shot on the Manticore has to add a good chunk on more to that. Fafa just, obliterates nearly the entirety of that Swedish tank destroyer in a single shell. I guess just going above the high explosive anti-tank shield that also works against Hesh in this game, just not nearly so well, because the Hesh will be able to go through uh, space screens and still damage things on the other side unless the space screen is large enough to be able to absorb. And remember, with these Hesh rounds, with 230 millimeters of penetration. There aren't many spaced screens in the game that are able to achieve that. Fafa's just rubbing it in right now. They've dealt more damage than I've ever been able to in World of Tanks at 10,287. And they've done it in less than five minutes. This 
vehicle is just outrageous when everything goes right. Now, you might be interested in the title of the video today. Why are you calling it the, uh, the the tank that hates everyone? Well, clearly we've seen that it absolutely hates the enemy team and completely obliterates them. But if you need any more evidence, let's check out the next game. So if that wasn't quite enough destruction for you, now we're going to be checking out Luan 2004, also from the European server. And the reason why I'm starting this game early is because I want to highlight Luan's choice of equipment. It's, it's always a matter of contention on a vehicle like this. Previously, on this kind of a tank, you'd probably take something like a gun ram events and a gun lane drive back before equipment 2.0. Now there's so many different competitive modules on this vehicle that a lot of players will decide to match their playstyles. I think that one of the best ones to take on this tank is the gun, uh, sorry, the aiming device, the enhanced aiming measures that you can take on the vehicle, because making these shots count is what's important. The reload's long enough as it is, and considering how much you invest into every single one of the shells, delivering them accurately can be a matter of life and death. You have to be able to destroy that tank, or at least cripple them to a point where hopefully your team are able to finish them off. And if you miss, well, you've got a horrible downtime irrelevant of whether you take a gun rammer on this vehicle. So, Luan's got that covered with the improved accuracy. Luan is also deciding to take a gun lane drive on this vehicle. That's an interesting choice because the tank has 3.7 seconds aim time, which is horrendous. So Luan is going to be able to get really quite nice gun handling on this vehicle. He's not using a rotation device, however, which will improve the dispersion when you're moving. So I guess Luan feels that he wants to just be able to quickly re-engage at tanks without moving the tank around too much. But definitely a rotation device on this vehicle can significantly help to be able to be more accurate, even while you're moving. But at close ranges like that, oof, Mr. Cranvong, you are not too happy about that. 1,704 damage completely rebalancing a vehicle that is also soon to be rebalanced by Wargaming if the Super Test has anything to say about it. The other module that Luan is using is a turbo. And I think a turbo is also a great choice on this vehicle because the tank has horrendous reverse speed. We're talking about eight kilometers an hour backwards. And being able to go at 11 backwards instead, even with a regular turbo on this tank, is a massive upgrade. And if you were to take a bounty or a bond turbo on this vehicle, you'd be able to go backwards at 12 kilometers an hour, which is literally 50% faster. And maybe that'll allow you to pull back around the corner after you've hopefully delivered the fatal blow. Talk about fatal blows, this Kranvang, not long left for this world. Uh, the FV405 and the Hess shells there, aiming down at the side of the Kranvang's armor. Now, remember, the armor-piercing rounds on this tank probably could have been able to overmatch the Kranvang's side armor if it's 60 or less. I'm not 100% certain. It's not often that you actually have to think about whether an armor has 60 millimeters, because there aren't that many, if any, vehicles, apart from this and the FV uh, 215B183, that get armor-piercing rounds that can actually overmatch tanks. That Progetto came around the corner oh so confident, now they're running away to lick their wounds, and that is what the FV4005 does. It is insane stopping power damage potential, and if you can get into a situation where your opponents don't focus you or don't really even consider about where you are, yeah, they are not going to be doing very well at all. So this Progetto, again, seems to be focused on the Leopard towards the west. You'd kind of forgive him in thinking. But it looks like Luan actually managed to spot that Progetto and get them shut down. And now, using the very flexible 10 degrees of gun depression that this vehicle has, Luan's going to try and get themselves into a position where they're going to be able to surprise anyone who comes around the corner. Why haven't we seen any super high rolls this video, right? 1,630. Have you noticed how both of our heroes in the... Uh, the video today haven't exactly been having any monster rolls for 1,800 or 1,900 or even 2,000 this vehicle can roll up. Well, what happens when one high alpha damage tank destroyer meets another high alpha damage tank destroyer? Well, it looks like that the uh, Fosh 155 did actually get the slight better of the, of the engagement there. But I guess we'll call it a draw, as both tank destroyers are firmly crippled now, reduced to uh, 258 hit points in Luan's case, and down to uh, 188 in the Fosh. Yeah, uh, live by the sword, die by the sword, I guess is a good terminology for when you're playing the FE4005. The Fosh finishes off the Leopard, and Luan should realize now that the Fosh won't have an extra round, but the uh, E50M on his team is able to deal with that.
So he's thinking about coming around the corner here, worried about whether somebody's going to have a fire, but I think everyone's pretty much spotted now, so that should allow Luan to be able to get into position to hopefully be able to deliver a blow. And again, with the turbo on this tank, it's decent enough at being able to, to get around, and it significantly helps the poor mobility that this vehicle has. One thing that's also really crazy about this tank is it actually has a pretty good power to weight ratio. So having the turbo actually allows it to accelerate pretty much at about uh, 36 to 38, depending on what kind of a turbo you're taking up slope. I've managed to actually get up onto the hill on Malinovka very, very quickly, much to the surprise of the opponents that were caught when they were up there. Of course, when you're up there, it's it's pretty darn awkward in being able to uh, lose all of your hit points because this thing has absolutely zero armor on the turret and even low caliber high explosive rounds are able to quickly remove its hit points. So 1,859 damage dealt there to the E100. Luan is one shot away from reaching that magical five digit damage total, which still eludes me. If you've been watching my videos all the way through this year, you'll know that I've had probably about six or seven different games which have been at 9,900 and whatever. Just for some reason, it just doesn't quite happen. I'm sure we'll get there eventually. Anyway, congratulations to you, Luan, on 10,664 damage. But there's also an E50M with maybe 400 that Luan can get a little bit of a taste of at the end of the game if they decide to crest that ridge line as Luan decides to rush and take them down. So the FE405 is currently top of the tree. A lot of you might be thinking, whoa, is this going to be the best thing to get your hands on? This thing looks outrageously overpowered, right? Well... I mean, you'd be forgiven in thinking that if you were only to watch this video. But what you might see now might truly surprise you about the FE4005. And that is that the FE4005 Stage 2 actually has the second worst win ratio of any of the Tier 10 tank destroyers. And if we arrange the, the Tier 10 tank destroyer damages in order of highest to worst on average the fe405 is at the bottom and not just at the bottom significantly at the bottom by about 10 percent lower than the badger and so accordingly what we realize is the fe405 is very hit and miss and when we have players like fafa and lawan basically stealing all of the luck they can have absolutely ridiculous games now look let me clarify Faf and Luan are clearly very, 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 very good players. But the FE405 can take that and propel it to a ridiculous level. And I can only imagine that for every uh, player who's doing incredibly well in this tank, there must be someone that's absolutely suffering for it. And you know what? It looks like people just keep coming back for more because the FE405 is the second most played tank destroyer in the last 30 days. 60 days, sorry, on the European server. And so that's not just because it's top of the tree now, because that only happened a few days ago. So it looks like we're all just suckers for punishment. We're a glutton. We're gluttons for punishment, boys and girls. As the tank that hates everyone, it doesn't matter. We still just keep coming back for more. Kind of sounds like uh, us in World of Tanks, right? So Fafa is Beast of West, managed to achieve 12,000 338 damage in that five minute game of World of Tanks. It even manages to make profit, although it looks like when using a credit booster. Nine shots, eight hits, eight pens, meaning that we literally was doing over 1,500 average damage for every shot that hit a tank. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Fafa, who has been streaming the last few days. So I'm going to put a link in my description if you want to go and check him out. And Luan's damage total was just as impressive at 11,131. And that was dealt in just over six minutes. And so Fafa and Luan, thank you so much for uploading replays of where the FV4005 doesn't suck. I'm hoping it's going to enthuse me to actually do a little bit better in this tank myself this month. As recently, I'm going to be honest, this has been my kryptonite in World of Tanks. It has absolutely destroyed me mentally. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for today. Really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it's released on Sunday, later on today, there's going to be a full tech tree showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby of the FV4005. And so if you want to see me play all of the vehicles that lead up to it so you can get some tips and tricks along the way, then feel free to tune in. Or maybe you just want to come and see me suffer as I probably get incredibly frustrated, angry, and tilt playing the 
RNG behemoth that is the FE405 Stage 2. So really looking forward to seeing you all live later on today, or live right now if you're watching this video hours after it's released. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic, and hopefully I'll see you soon.